Hi, my name is Barry Crompton. Today I'm going to show you around our Range Rover Westminster. Then I'll take you for a ride in it. But first I'll tell you a little bit more about it. First thing is, it took me all, all my willpower to get out of that lovely, warm, comfortable car into the freezing cold and rainy weather. So, it's a 4.4 TD V8 Westminster. 2012 on a 12 plate, has done 59,495 miles, got a great service history, MOT until the 7th of April 2021, last serviced on the 30th of the 7th 2020 at 56,222 miles. Fuel economy, urban 24.6 miles per gallon, extra urban 34.4 miles per gallon, and combined is 30.1 miles per gallon. Has a 0 to 60 time of 7.5 seconds. The top speed of 130 miles per hour out of a 308 brake horsepower, 32 valve V8 engine. Road tax is um, 12 months is 565 pounds. But to be fair, I really, really do think you get what you pay for um, and it, it's well worth it. So on the front, we've got the, the big in-your-face Range Rover badge and grille, which I personally uh, really like. Xenon headlamps, high-pressure headlamp wash, we've got fog lamps and parking sensors in the, uh, in the bumper. That's one of my favourite things too, a proper Range Rover key. I, wish they'd, I really wish they'd go back to uh, making them like this because you can't lose them. If they drop out of your pocket, you hear the paving stones crack. It's a fantastic thing, really well engineered. Multi-spoke alloys, we have the side vents here, side steps, power folding door mirrors, it's got the electric glass sunroof, um, black window surround. So we've got the rear privacy glass, the integrated tailgate roof spoiler, which hides your rear wash wipe as well. It's the split tailgate, which is really handy. Could find the button strong enough for you to sit on in fact the whole car is just fantastically well built uh, from the from the key upwards it's split folding rear seats you've got this hard cardboard load cover not your your roller blind it's got a, a full size uh, spare wheel it's on a, uh, a steel rim is probably a get your home um, tire but it's it's never been on the car so underneath you've got the tow bar and electrics there. You've got uh, the rear parking sensors. Just in the back here as well, reversing camera. And this, uh, there's a, a covering on the bump so you don't scratch it when you're loading anything or when you, your, dogs, your, your gun dog's jumping in and out. This, in my opinion, is how cars should be made. Um, carpet mats are nice, but crikey, they're hard to keep clean and, 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 and clean when they do get dirty and get mud in and, and so on and hoover out. This has got the heavy duty, thick rubber mats. You take them out of your hose pipe them and sponge them and they'll be all right, like brand new. Got heated seats in the back here. Here, rear, big rear center armrest. Stop the kids fighting, can't reach over, two cup holders, place to put your mobile phone. It's just nice big high seats, plenty of headroom as well. The, the sunroof does make a little bit of difference, but it's a nice light interior anyway, so it's not, not claustrophobic at all. You've got the Harman Kardon speakers in the armrest here, and this piano black inset with Range Rover inlaid in silver, really classy. Um, Jaguar and Land Rover, I think they've got the interiors, uh, uh, I was going to say just sewn up, but that, that doesn't sound right, does it? Side steps handy there, just getting out. I'm going to get the heated steering wheel on and the heated seats and take you for a ride. Horrid day. There you go, that's the uh, close-up of the Range Rover key. Proper, proper piece of engineering. <laughs> we'll stick that in there because it's keyless start anyway. So there you go. We've got a warning on the dashboard. 
uh, warning triangle there. It says smart key battery low. So we, we just need another battery in there and uh, that, that'll be sorted. But that's, that's well, this test drive is uh, predominantly what the, uh, what we we do it for to make sure the car's all right, everything works on the car, um, and then if anything needs reporting off the road test to the workshop before we do the pre-delivery inspection, then um, there's nothing missed. So I'll just tell you about the service history. The 25th of the 3rd, 2013, at 5,155 miles, it was done at Stratsons at Land Rover. On the 17th of the 4th, 2014, at 9,866 miles, Pentland Land Rover. 16th of the 6th, 2015, at 19,151 miles, Stratstone Land Rover again. 4th of the 4th, 2016, at 23,306 miles, Prestige Servicing. 7th of the 4th, 2017, at 29,270 miles, of Bosch Service Centre, Darlington. 10th of the 4th, 2018, at 35,325 miles, Darlington Auto Care. 4th of the 4th, 2019, at 42,796 miles, Darlington Auto Care. 30th of the 7th, 2020, at 56,222 miles, Darlington Auto Care. So, <laughs> Range Rovers, my favourite cars. Um, how to describe them? They, these are the best sort of days when you jump in a Range Rover. It's just, you get the same feeling as when you're... Uh, when you, you're tucked up in bed and you can hear the, the rain lashing against your window. It, the, they're fantastic, really cosy, nice and safe. This heated steering wheel, and we've also here got heated seats, we'll turn them on. But alternatively, you can also have cool seats. So in the summer when it's too hot for you, and I know it's hard to imagine just at this moment, uh, but when it is too hot for you in the summer, then you can turn the switch the other way and that, that blows cold air through the seats and stops you getting too uncomfortable. We've got here height and reach adjustable electronically controlled steering wheel and three position memory seats. Now, I'll do the memory seats because I, 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 always, <laughs> I always go on about um, the smallest people seem to drive the biggest cars. and and. To be honest, it's because I get, I get a lot of comments, uh, a lot of messages. I got one yesterday. I'm five foot four. Do you think I'll be able to drive this this car? Well, the answer is if you if you think you can drive it, you can. And if you think you can't, you can't. Um, I've sold a, a, a few cars to Kenny Baker, who used to play R two D two. And uh, when when I used to take him to work, he used to. When he's having his car service, the, that is, he wasn't he wasn't doing Star Wars at our, our garage. But when I used to take him to pick his car up after it had been serviced, he used to sit on my rear centre armrest so he, so he could see out. But he had a Rolls Royce and he had a Mercedes uh, E320 Coupe. I think I sold him the first time, um, and, and he was like three foot. He could drive it, so anybody can drive it. But also the the memory seat roulette game. Let's have a look. And I, I promise you, I don't mess about with these seats, so we'll see. I can't even find where this one is. Right, so that's position one. Position two. Oh, hell. <laughs> that, that's position two. And position three. So, judging from the seat positions, my theories come true again. Uh, and I, I can only think that um, smaller people are better judges of just how good cars are, because these are fantastic. We've got the glass sunroof at the top here, tilt and slide. Um, that, that's the tilt bit, the slide bit. It is. Is raining pretty hard, so I won't keep that open too long. And then you've got the shade band, but it, it's a it is a a different car with a shade 
uh, or the blind open. It's um, nice, light and airy. We'll get that steering wheel down a bit. Will the seat go down anymore? No, that's it. Um, also, power folding dormer is there. I'll put the fan back on for it because the windows are misting up. The, the steering wheel's nice and toasty. The seats are nice and toasty. The heat is great. The, the wipers, uh, I noticed that on the way, that would drive me absolutely bonkers, but how could you put up with that? So, it needs two wipers. And again, in one of the, this 4.4 engine V8, it's just awesome. And it, whenever I'm videoing these, and I always say it, it reminds me of when you're going on your holidays. I, I associate all good things with Range Rovers. And it reminds me of when you're going on your holidays and you, you get on the plane and then you, you taxi into the runway, going around all little bends and stopping and slowing down, and then you wait for another plane to take off and you know that when you turn left it's all going to happen and uh, now we'll just go around this roundabout and then I'll uh, perhaps boot it's not the right choice of words but right Pilot's just putting his foot down a bit. And if he just times it right and you don't have to sit on the end of the runway. Here we go. Get the wheels straight and then we can gun it. That's just awesome. 4.4 V8. And, uh, you know, you, you can go on about electric cars as much as you want. Somebody, somebody gave me a telling off for being biased against electric cars, but the way I see it is you can operate a petrol or diesel car independently of any network so long as you've got fuel if electric cars were that good they'd have been in Mad Max but they're not the big big fuel you don't have to rely on a nuclear powered generator which could explode at any time they're going about petrol engines being dirty and so on but um, if your engine blows up, it doesn't, you know, you can still live in the same town. You don't have to clear out for a hundred years like you do in Chernobyl or anything. The, the engineering and the mechanics involved in getting this vehicle running are just, it's almost magical. And engines don't really go wrong. We, we don't have problems with engines as such and gearboxes and, and running gear. You have a few things which are service items like brake pads and, and perhaps clutches and stuff. They, they are the friction parts and the tyres, they're made to wear out. But actual engines, they, they go on forever. The only thing that goes wrong in cars these days are electrical items, ECU, and but mostly motors anything with motor on the end will go wrong if you don't use it and by 2030 <laughs> they're going to get rid of petrol and diesel engines and replace them with electric motors now I'll be 72 by then so it probably won't bother me too much but if I was still in the motor trade and I was still selling cars, I, I'd be kicking up such a fuss because, you know, you, you can work on an engine here. You can work on it. You don't have to, 
you're not going to get a massive electric shock when you when you're working on it if for any reason the fuel sets on fire and I've, I've seen it happen I've seen somebody cut through um, a fuel pipe with a uh, welding torch and flames started shooting out we crimped the pipe and, and stopped it before it ex but these electric fuel cells they start burning and they go on forever you can't put them out so just imagine a showroom burning down with all them in it, it just don't bear thinking about it. I, I I can't the reason I don't like electric cars is I can't get my head around them at all these are my type of things anything with a real nice big engine that's been well looked after they're fantastic this you've got sport there the rotary so there you go holds it in gear as long as possible on the on the steering wheel we've got paddle shift so I can kick down like so and set off it's nice and easy we've got one touch cruise set that that's the cruise control in Range Rover I, I have another theory about the same time that they stopped making Nokia 6210s Nokia phones went they went downhill after that and Range Rovers got better and I think Range Rover must have kidnapped the guy who designed the 6210 and, and got him to design the cars because everything's dead simple it's so good everything about it is is it's a, a Nokia 6210 on on wheels it's it's horrible outside you see that car in front he won't be able to see out the windscreen look where the spray is and I can see over the top of him wait till he goes past this let's put that on fast when he goes past this tanker he dis he's disappeared into a cloud of spray might not show very well on the on the cameras really because the, the cameras tend to cut through the spray but I'd, I'd go past it no no problem <clears throat> electric windows here your power folding dormers electric dormers it's got a great sound system it's got a TV now also I'm gonna to have to turn this it's horrible outside and I'm now too warm with the seat it's also got you know when you uh, when you come out in the morning and you watch you're watching people like <laughs> trying to get the snow off the windscreen with the car keys or something when your car's clear or you see a car that's absolutely clear well this has got heated front screen and heated rear screen but also the heated screen heated steering wheel fantastic but also if you go into your main menu here and then you've got settings timed climate you can there you go you can you can set it to defrost in the morning um, come out to your car everybody else is messing about and with the, the hot kettles and the de-icer the de-icer which ruins your windscreen wipers your car's defrosted that's the joys of having a Range Rover I mean it's they're just You can probably tell I like them. Bags of headroom, loads of space. Nice big ledge here to put your that elbow on. If you are really wide, you can take that off and have, have your elbow on there. If you're not too bad, you just you've got your your armrest here just uh, just supercars here you've got your terrain response raise and lower the car on the uh, air suspension go off road go through floods we've got also let's see navigation there sat nav yeah I've just got to agree I'm not going to be distracted that's the sat nav again a nice old 
plane system. There's a defender there. They just they just parked at the side of the road with two wheels on the grass. Park them anywhere. I and you know when I say you can park them anywhere, I don't mean disabled spots and and double yellow lines. I mean off the road and. Uh, you, you you know you're gonna uh, I once went to see a motocross event and down and the motocross event was down this quite steep muddy embankment of course it was great um, but it threw it down which was great for the motocross but when everybody was trying to get out <laughs> nobody could get up the uh, <laughs> nobody could get up the slope slope except for the people that had Range Rovers, marvellous cars, best car in the world, best design in the world. That's also, you can hear the indicator, I'll just get around the corner so I don't confuse anybody, but we'll just, we'll just do it here turn that off if I indicate there that's right that's left you can hear the left indicator is going slower than the right that indicates to me that there's a bulb gun as well um, so it sounds like there's a bulb gun in the indicator I need to report and get sorted and here we go You know, car this size and it takes a le up less room than a little Ford Ka on the road. Just awesome. Use a slight bit of body roll there to get round the corner. On here, on the right hand side, you've got your telephone controls. Those are your, your cruise controls on the left. So that's it. The car drives absolutely fantastic. It's a good looking car. It's in great condition. It's got a fantastic service history. It's lovely inside. And uh, not really a lot else to say except um, give us a call if you want to buy it we've got a, a few other cars that have just come in we have got another very very nice car that i'm looking forward to um, videoing an audi a8 and um, i've liked them ever since i, I saw ronin <laughs> and also um, when i was working at amari's and uh, i had the use of a uh, an Audi A8 with a V10 Lamborghini engine in it uh, for a short while and uh, that, that was just awesome but I still prefer the driving position and that the overall setup and feel of driving one of these horrible day great car. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.